All right, looking at the DCT, you might want to refresh your memory with this information. All right, if we're going to use this test, it has us uh, look at the series and fit it, make it resemble, or, you know, find something that it resembles as far as something we're familiar with how to handle. So when I look at this, I'm thinking of a convergent piece series, 1 over n cubed. So I just kind of put a note to myself what it resembles. All right, in order for us to use this test effectively, what we have to do is once we establish what we're going to compare it to, um, if this is a convergent P-series, then this series right here has to be smaller than my convergent P-series. Because if this series is, is bigger, if all the terms are bigger than these terms of this series, well, we can't say if it converges or diverges. So once you establish um, the resembled, I guess, uh, series, um, determine if it's convergent or divergent, and then decide what this one has to do. So if this one converges, this one has to be smaller. Okay. All right, so I'm going to call this A sub N. I'm going to call the series that I'm trying to determine convergence on A sub N. So if this is A sub N, then what I need to have is A sub N has to be smaller than, so this one would be our B sub N. Okay. All right. So a sub n is equal to 1 over n cubed plus 1. And we're trying to prove that term by term that every single term is less than or equal to a 1 over n cubed, which is our b sub n. All right, so sometimes we're going to want a sub n to be smaller than our resembled series, and sometimes we're going to want it to be larger. It just depends. You just have to reason through what we need this one to do in, in relationship to what's happening with this, um, this similar series. Uh, we can see the denominator is getting larger here because you're adding one, so every term will be smaller than every term of this series. So uh, this one is going to converge. Converges by the DCT. So for example, too, I might want to rewrite it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of negative exponents. Sometimes they're okay to work with. Sometimes I get a better understanding of the problem if I rewrite something with a positive exponent. So this is going to be 1 over 2 to the positive n factorial. Um, factorials increase uh, much more quickly uh, than exponentials, so I, I just think of an exponential resemble, uh, resemblance here. So I'm going to say that this series resembles the convergent geometric series 1 over 2 raised to the n power. So the resembled series is 1 over 2 to the n, it's convergent, it's geometric. Alright, so if we're comparing it to a convergent series, then this series has to be smaller. I'm going to call this a sub n, okay, and this is b sub n. So with this comparison, a sub n must be smaller than b sub n. Okay, we're trying to prove if Okay, every term of this series is going to be less than or equal to every term of this series right here. And you can generate a few terms and do a comparison, but it's, it's obvious that, you know, we're going to have smaller terms here. So by the DC, DCT, um, this series is going to converge. All right, example three turned out pretty good. Okay, kind of paid attention to what's going on here, the structure... Um, I'm going to use the DCT, uh, and I'm going to compare it to 1 over 3 to the n, which is a convergent geometric series. Okay, so again, we're comparing it to a convergent series. So if we're comparing it to a convergent series, then I'm going to call this a sub n, always a sub n, and I'm going to call this series b sub n. Okay, so that tells us that this series has to be smaller than b sub n the comparison series. Okay. okay, 
And if you were to evaluate, uh, this is, oh, sorry, B sub n here, if you were to evaluate it different, you know, various values of n starting with zero, um, I think we should see that every term of this series is going to be smaller than every term of this series, so therefore it is going to be convergent also if it's smaller than an already convergent series. So it converges by the DCT. Okay, so let's take a look at the last one. Okay, to me it looks like a um, 1 over square root of n series, which is a divergent p series. So that's what I'm going to start with in comparing it to a divergent p series. Okay, we've established that resemblance. Okay, so if this series diverges, then I want this series to be greater than this divergent series. Because if this p series diverges, what am I going to gain by saying that this series is smaller than, less than this series? Nothing. It might converge, it might diverge. So working with this series right here, since it's divergent, I want this series to be greater than this one right here. Okay, so we're going to call this our A sub n series. This is our B sub n series. Okay, I just let the one I'm testing be A sub n, and then I decide to how, to how to do the setup down here. Okay, so again, we want a sub n to be greater than b sub n. So b sub n would start off okay, with 1 over square root of n in the denominator. Okay, would have to be um, less than okay, all the terms okay, of this series right here, which is a sub n. Okay, so we want a sub n to be larger than... 1 over square root of n. Okay, and if you generate a few terms, uh, this denominator is always going to be smaller than this denominator, so this will be the larger denominator, so the value of these um, terms will be always smaller than these. These terms will always be greater than these terms right here, so it diverges. Because the resembled series diverges, so does this one, because it's larger. All right, so that's the DCT. All right, uh, the next note card is limit comparison. That's not something required by College Board, so we're going to skip that. Let's go to note card 11. All right, the AST, the alternating series test, applies if you have um, series where the terms are alternating in signs. Oh, gosh, like this notation. All right, example number one. Okay, once we've established that we're dealing with an alternating um, series, then we can try and apply the AST test. Or I guess I should just say the AST. Okay, there's two parts to that as you've read back through. The first part is looking at the nth term, the limit of the nth term. Okay, we disregard the positive negative sign. This just tells us which terms are positive and negative, the odd or the even terms, whether we start with a positive or a negative, etc. Okay, so the first part is just to find the limit of the nth term. So that just means we focus our attention on this piece right here. All right, that has to be zero before we can even proceed to part two. All right, it is equal to zero. Remember, if it doesn't equal zero, then we can say that the series diverges because of the nth term test. Okay, part two, once this is established and we get a zero in the AST test, Okay, the second thing to do is compare um, uh, uh, two consecutive terms. Okay, so let's compare 1 over n plus 1, replace the n with n plus 1. Okay, is that less than or equal to okay, the term that is before it? Check, larger denominator, smaller number, okay, converges by AST. You may have noticed, too, on your note cards that there's a lot of parentheses missing. I don't know why they didn't show up. Like back at the top of this note card, the negative ones in the summation notations on the very top line, both those negative ones should be in parentheses. All right, and even in on example two, I can see that the negative one needed to be in parentheses. Okay, I see this is an alternating series, so we're just going to start with the alternating series test, part one. Okay, ignoring this for the time being, finding the limit 
as n goes to infinity of the a sub n, or this okay, term. Okay, plug in infinity, you get indeterminate. You can use L'Hopital's rule. Derivative on top is 2, on bottom is 4. That reduces to a half, so that limit is going to be a half. Well, AST says that has to be 0, but it's clearly not 0. Okay, and so by the nth term test, we can say that this series diverges. So, you know, sometimes you start to use the AST, but when, when, when the first one, first part of the test fails, well, that just means you're back at the nth term test for divergence. Right, let's see, example three is a multiple choice. Uh, which of the following series converge? Okay. All right, which of the following series converges? All right, option number one, or Roman numeral number one, uh, that's going to diverge by the nth term test. So number one is out. I guess this is Roman numerals. Ooh. I don't know. Okay, uh, we can see that the third choice also diverges. That's a harmonic series, P series. Okay, so if anything's going to converge, it's going to be number two. So our choices have been narrowed down to A and B. So we have to figure out if choice two is going to converge or not. And it's an interesting series dealing with the trig function. So let's see how we're going to handle that. I'm going to pull it down here to have a little more room. Now let's generate a few terms so we can kind of take a peek in and see what we think. Um, if n is 1, the cosine of pi is negative 1 over, sorry, this would be 1. So we start with negative 1. Plus, if n is 2, cosine of 2 pi is 1. So that would be 1 over 2. If cosine is, th or if n is 3, then cosine of 3 pi is back to negative 1. Okay, so that would be minus 1 over Okay, so again, this was n is 1, this is n is 2, this is n is 3, so n is 4, cosine of 4 pi is going to be positive 1 over a fourth. So, okay, what's happening is that cosine of n pi, cosine of n pi is alternating from negative 1 to 1, okay, so it's creating, right, so it appears this is an alternating series, so we can use the AST test to determine if it converges. All right, so since we're going to use the AST test, what's the limit as n goes to infinity? Of, it appears to be um, negative 1 to the n over n. So remember, this alternates. Okay, and so actually I needed to ignore the negative 1 here. So I'm not even going to say that's my first part. I'm going to say that's a rewrite of this series. So as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, yep, that's going to go to 0. Okay. And the second part says to make a comparison. Is 1 over n plus 1 going to be less than or equal to 1 over n? It certainly is. And so both parts um, pass, part 1 and 2, so it is going to be a convergent series. So my answer is B. All right, let's take a look at that um, alternating series remainder next note card. All right, for this topic, it'd be a good idea to read through this, um, this paragraph right here. All right, number one. All right, if we generated the first 100 terms, okay, what would be the error in using just the first 100 terms? Okay, um, for this series. All right, well, the error would be less than the first neglected term. So if I'm using 100 terms, I really want to figure out what the 101st term is, and that uh, that's going to be our error. Our error will be less than that. All right, so just looking at some notation and looking at the formula up above. Okay, not that we have to write any of this, but I think it's good to look at it. The remainder of the 100 first terms, 
is going to be equal to the actual sum of the series, that's what S represents, minus the hundredth partial sum using a hundred terms. Okay. And it tells us that that error is going to be less than or equal to the value of the hundred and first term, the first neglected term. So really all we had to do was find A sub 101. A sub 101, plug in 101, you get an even exponent that's positive, 1 over n is 101. So my error would be less than whatever that decimal amount is. I think it's kind of wordy. It kind of makes it sound confusing, but really not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and add an order, and I'm going to switch over and look at number three. We'll do two last. I think one and three are, are uh, more closely related. All right, number three takes a different approach. Determine the number of terms required so that your error is less than one one thousandth. So for me, I'm going to generate a few terms okay, and find the term that's going to have a value that's smaller than one one thousandth. So that way I can go back and count the number of terms. So that's what I'm going to do, generate a few terms of this series. All right, just pulling that series back down here, giving us a little more working room. If n is 0 everywhere, you're just going to get 1. If n is 1, then I'm going to have a minus. Okay, if n is 1, I'm going to have 1 over n is 1, 2. Okay, so this is our 0 term, I guess, our first term, if we're starting with 0. Ah. Yeah, you get the idea. That's 2 then. So if n is 2, we're going to be back to a positive term. <laughs> plus 1 over, if you plug in 2, you're going to have 2 squared times 2 factorial. Okay, and I don't think that value of that's going to be less than 1 1,000th. So I'm going to continue. Minus, so that's going to be 1 over, so this is 2, this is now 3. It doesn't like those. 2 cubed times 3 factorial. Mm, that's 8 times 6, that's 48 in the denominator, and I'm looking for 1 over 1 1,000th. <laughs> Okay, wrapping it down here, plus the next term would be 1 over, okay, 2 to the 4th times 4 factorial. Okay, and if you were to do these computations, that's still not 1 1,000, or 1,000. The next term would be minus 1 over 2 to the 5th times 5 factorial. And I think if you stop right here and you calculated 2 to the 5th, which was 32, 32 times 5 factorial, which is 120, if you calculated that, that's going to be... Um, uh, over 1,000. So we're in a position to answer the question, determine the number of terms required to approximate the sum with an error less than 1 1,000th. So this term right here is a value that's less than 1 1,000th. So let's count all the terms before this term. So this is term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I would need to have five terms so that my error is less than 1 1,000th. So that's the answer, five terms required. Okay, kind of a weird problem. We're going to estimate the amount of error involved in the approximation of f of negative 1 for the first three terms. Okay, so at first glance it doesn't appear to be an alternating series, but think about what they're asking us to do. They're asking us to find the functional value at negative 1. So that means wherever x is, I'm going to replace it with negative 1. So it's kind of interesting that it didn't look like it's alternating, but now it is. Okay, so I'm going to replace x with negative 1. If it's not an alternating series, we can't use the alternating series remainder formula. So at first glance, it didn't appear to be. Okay, but now because of that interesting choice, that x value of negative 1, we can now use this uh, little formula. Alright, so if we're going to just find the first three terms, then I need the fourth term. So let's find the fourth term, a sub 4, of the series. Okay, so if n is 4, that's positive. Oh, 4 to the 4th. Okay, so I have negative 1 to the 4th. And this will be 4 to the 4th. Denominator is 3 to the 4th times 4 factorial. Okay, and we can kind of work all that out. It wouldn't be bad without a calculator, I don't think. So if you were to work it all out without a calculator, expand this, expand this, 
um, you end up with 32 over 243. Okay, so that's it for those tests.